Hi, I'm Olivia. Before I continue, please like and subscribe to hear more of my story. Growing up in a family where I was always the afterthought was tough. My mother, a woman more concerned with appearances than actual love, and my two siblings, who cared for nothing but their own benefits, made sure I knew my place. Always last. Despite their coldness, I found solace in planning my dream wedding, a day where I could be the center of love and happiness. But the night before my wedding brought a nightmare I never expected. Oh my god, Olivia, what happened to your dress? My best friend Lily gasped as we stared at the shredded fabric sprawled across my room. My wedding dress, which I had saved for and dreamt of for years, lay in tatters. I... I don't understand. Who would do this? My voice was barely a whisper, heart pounding with disbelief and rising anger. Your mom was here earlier, right? Lily's question felt like a punch in the gut. I remembered my mom entering my room, her eyes scanning with disapproval as usual. But to think she would... Mom! The word escaped my lips like a hiss as I stormed downstairs. I found her in the living room, nonchalant, flipping through a magazine. Olivia, what's with the noise? And why do you look like a mess? Her words were icy, devoid of concern. My wedding dress, Mom. You destroyed it. My voice trembled with a mix of rage and heartbreak. Her reaction was a cold, mocking laughter. Oh, that old thing? I thought it was your sister's cheap purchase for her upcoming party. It was an eyesore anyway. The nonchalance in her tone was like acid on my wounds. How could you? I felt the tears welling up, but I refused to let them fall. That was my wedding dress. Olivia, always so dramatic. It's just a dress. Buy another one, she said, turning her attention back to her magazine. The rest of the evening was a blur. I was consoled by Lily and my other friends, who rallied around me, offering their support and strength. We sat in my living room, the remnants of my dress a sad reminder of the family I was born into. Olivia, this isn't the end, Lily reassured me, her hand gripping mine. You're stronger than this. You've always been. Yeah, and you've got us, added Mike, another close friend. We're your real family, and we'll help you get through this. Their words, though comforting, couldn't completely heal the hurt. But they ignited something in me. A determination. If my family thought they could break me this easily, they were wrong. I would have my dream wedding, and I would start anew, away from the toxicity that had marred my life for too long. The next day, I stood at the altar, clad in a simple yet elegant dress that Lily had found. As I exchanged vows with my loving partner, I realized this was more than a wedding. It was my declaration of independence from a family that never deserved me. My mom and siblings sat in the back, their expressions a mix of shock and begrudging acceptance. They had come, expecting to see a broken woman, but instead, they witnessed my strength and the love that surrounded me. The love they had never offered. The wedding was beautiful, but it wasn't just the start of my marital life. It marked the beginning of a new chapter, one where I was no longer a victim of my family's cruelty. It was the start of my journey towards healing and finding true happiness, far away from the shadows of my past. The celebration that followed was full of laughter, dancing, and genuine joy. Surrounded by friends who had become my chosen family, I knew I had already triumphed over the spite and malice of my blood relatives. They had tried to break me, but in their ignorance, they had only made me stronger. As the night drew to a close, I looked around at the smiling faces, the love and support evident in their eyes, and I knew I was exactly where I was meant to be. This was just the beginning, and I was ready for whatever the future held. For the first time in a long time, I felt truly free. Olivia, are you even listening? We're discussing the Europe trip. My sister's voice snapped me back to the present, where my family sat around the dining table, animatedly planning their luxurious European vacation. Yeah, Olivia, do try to show some interest. It's not every day one gets to travel to Europe, my brother chimed in, barely glancing up from his phone. I cleared my throat, trying to mask the hurt of being excluded yet again. Actually, I won't be able to join. I have other commitments. My mother waved her hand dismissively. Well, that's settled then. We'll send you pictures, dear, as the door closed behind them a week later. Leaving me alone in the large, silent house, I couldn't help but feel a mix of relief and sadness. 
relief at the temporary escape from their constant belittling, and sadness at the stark reminder of how little I meant to them. Sitting alone in my room, I reflected on the years of mistreatment and neglect. It was time for a change. I decided to use their absence to focus on my own growth and happiness. I began by digging out my old sketch pad and paints, reigniting my long-suppressed passion for art. As I painted, I felt a sense of peace and empowerment. I started working on a series of paintings, each one a representation of my journey and struggles. In the evenings, I would sit down with my laptop and start documenting every instance of toxic behavior from my family. I meticulously gathered old texts, emails, and even audio recordings. This wasn't just for me. It was for anyone else who might feel alone in their struggle against familial toxicity. One day, while rummaging through old boxes in the attic, I stumbled upon a diary. It was my grandmother's, someone I had always felt a strange connection with, despite never really knowing her. As I read through her words, I was stunned to find echoes of my own experiences with my family. She too had been the black sheep, subjected to similar mistreatment. Armed with this newfound knowledge and the parallel between our lives, I felt an even greater resolve to stand up to my family upon their return. I would no longer be the silent victim in the background. As the days turned into weeks, my project grew. My paintings became more vivid and expressive, and the documentation more detailed and damning. I started a blog to share my experiences and art, and to my surprise, it resonated with many. Messages of support and similar stories flooded in, and I realized I wasn't alone in my journey. The night before my family's return, I sat in the living room, surrounded by my paintings and the compiled evidence of their toxicity. I was ready to confront them, to show them the person I had become in their absence, someone stronger, more confident, and no longer willing to accept their abuse. So, they left for Europe without even a goodbye, I muttered to myself, staring at the empty driveway where my family's car once stood. It was typical of them, but this time, their absence sparked something different in me, a sense of freedom and a burning desire to change my life. I plunged into my project, an art installation that combined photography and sculpture. It was my passion, a talent long ignored by my family. As I worked, I felt a liberation I'd never experienced before. One afternoon, while engrossed in my work, an unexpected visitor knocked at my door. Olivia, it's been ages. I saw your art online. It's amazing, exclaimed Sarah, an old high school friend. Her enthusiasm was contagious. Thanks, Sarah. I've been working on this for months. It's like a part of me. I showed her around my makeshift studio. Our conversation flowed effortlessly, rekindling a friendship I thought I'd lost. Word about my project spread, catching the eye of a local gallery owner. Olivia, your work is exceptional. How about showcasing it at my gallery? His offer left me speechless. It was the break I'd been hoping for. With each passing day, my confidence soared. I started going out more, reconnecting with old friends, and making new ones. They saw me for who I was, not the overshadowed girl my family perceived. At a small art gathering, I met Alex, a graphic designer with a gentle demeanor and a sharp wit. Olivia, your art speaks volumes. It's like you're telling a story without saying a word. His words sparked something in me, and soon, we found ourselves deep in conversation. Our connection was undeniable. As the weeks passed, Alex and I grew closer. He supported my dreams, respected my space, and most importantly, treated me with a kindness I had never known. Olivia, with you, everything just feels right, he confessed one evening under the stars. I felt the same. My family's return date crept closer but I wasn't the same person they left behind. I was stronger, happier, and no longer willing to be their scapegoat. The night before their arrival, my friends gathered around me. Olivia, you've got this. You're not alone anymore. You've changed so much, and it's all because you chose to stand up for yourself, added Mike. With their encouragement, I prepared myself. I compiled a folder of evidence, texts, emails, pictures, proof of the years of neglect and emotional abuse. I was ready to confront them, to show them the Olivia they never cared to know. As the sun rose on the day of their return, I stood in front of my house, a newfound resolve in my eyes. I was ready to face them, to demand the respect and acknowledgement I deserved. My family arrived, 
weary from their travels, surprised to find me waiting. Olivia, why are you here? Did you miss us that much? My mother joked, her voice dripping with sarcasm. I held up the folder, my voice steady. No, I'm here to show you who I am, what I've become, and what you've done. It's time for change. Look at this place. Mom's voice echoed through the halls as she stepped into the house, her eyes widening at the changes. New decor, pictures of me with friends, awards from my project. A stark contrast to the home they left. Olivia, is that you? Dad sounded genuinely surprised, peering at me like I was a stranger. You look... different. Confident, I corrected him with a smile, feeling the strength within me. I've changed. Sis snorted, rolling her eyes. What's gotten into her? Brother just stood there, bewildered, taking in my transformed demeanor. I wanted to talk to you all, I began, my voice steady, about how you've treated me over the years. Oh, here we go again, Mom muttered, but I didn't falter. Your neglect, your constant dismissal of my feelings, it hurt me more than you can imagine. But I'm not that person anymore. Dad tried to interrupt. No, let me finish. I've documented everything. The hurtful comments, the dismissals, the way you tore my wedding dress. A hush fell over them, their faces a mix of guilt and disbelief. Olivia, we... we're sorry, Sis stammered, her eyes avoiding mine. Sorry doesn't erase the past, I replied firmly. Sorry doesn't change the years of pain. But we're family, brother protested weakly. Family doesn't treat each other the way you treated me. You need to face the consequences of your actions. I'm not seeking revenge, but I refuse to let you walk away without understanding the pain you caused. There was a heavy silence as they absorbed my words. The air was thick with unspoken apologies and realizations. I found happiness now, away from your toxic behavior. I've built a life where I'm valued and respected. Olivia, we never meant to. Mom's voice trailed off, her usual arrogance replaced by a rare vulnerability. Intentions don't matter when the actions cause harm. I've moved on, and I suggest you do the same. Learn from this. Grow from it. Maybe one day, you'll understand. As they stood there, stunned and silent, I realized the shift in power. I was no longer the victim. I was the victor, standing tall in the face of those who had once tried to break me. Can you believe what they're saying about us? Mom's voice was shrill, filled with disbelief as she read through the online comments. I saw the posts. Olivia's story is everywhere, Dad said, scrolling through his phone, his face growing paler with every word he read. People are calling us monsters, Sis exclaimed, her usual composure shattered. Even our friends are turning their backs on us, Brother added, a tone of desperation creeping into his voice. I watched them from a distance, their world crumbling as they faced the isolation they had so often forced upon me. The community's reaction was swift and harsh, a social ostracism they had never expected to experience themselves. Meanwhile, my life was flourishing. My career took off, thanks to my project's success. And my personal life was more fulfilling than ever. Are you ready for today? Lily asked, her eyes sparkling with excitement. More than ready, I replied, feeling a surge of happiness. Today was my wedding day, a small, intimate ceremony with those who truly cared for me. The ceremony was beautiful, a stark contrast to the grand but hollow event I had once planned. My family's pleas for forgiveness and acceptance fell on deaf ears. They had to learn their lesson the hard way, just as I had learned mine. It was time for them to reflect on their actions, and hopefully, change for the better. The story ends here, but my life, my real, beautiful life, was just beginning. Has justice truly been served in Olivia's story? Olivia found her strength and moved on, but her family faced social isolation for their actions. Do you think this was a fair outcome? Was it enough for the pain they caused? Or should there have been more direct confrontation? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And remember, this marks the end of Olivia's journey of empowerment and self-discovery. If you enjoyed this story, please give this video a like and subscribe for more. We value your support and can't wait to bring you more captivating stories. Your likes, shares, and comments help our channel grow, so don't forget to engage and let us know what you think. Thank you for watching and being a part of this storytelling journey.